Hello everyone, this is Morgan, the Plum Tree Nutter. In this video, I'm going to walk you through an engineer's guide to the optimal string length for friendship bracelets. Most of the discussion in this talk is about normal friendship bracelets, but some conclusions can also be applied to alpha patterns. So let's get started. One of the most frequently asked questions from beginners is how long should the strings be? I find some rule of thumb type of answers from the internet. For example, bracelet book recommends one meter per string, but they also mention that it can differ from pattern to pattern. The answer on friendshipbracelets.net is a bit more informative. First, they recommend that you need 30 to 40 inches per string, that is about 0.8 to 1 meter. They also mention that smaller patterns are going to need shorter strings compared to bigger ones. And finally, within one bracelet, the strings making diamonds are going to be longer compared to the rest. These are some nice guidelines, but they are not quantitative enough. After reading all of this, I'm still not sure how long exactly should my strings be. So I did a little research project myself to find the answer. First, let's break a bracelet down to its most fundamental component, knots. If we know how much string is used in tying one knot, we can then estimate the length we need for a bracelet using multiplication. There are four basic knots, forward knot, backward knot, forward backward knot, and backward forward knot. They all have a common feature. The knotting string makes two loops around the base string, and these two loops are connected by a linking piece. So we can build a geometrical model to represent all four basic knots here. We assume that the string has a constant diameter d. So here, the gray color is for the base string, and the red color is for the knotting string. The length of the base string used in one knot is then 2d, and this is also the length of the linking piece of the knotting string. For the two loops in the knotting string, we can model them as two circles with the diameter of 1.5d, and the circumference of these two circles contribute to the total length of the knotting string. This diameter 1.5d of course can change depending on how tight or loose you make your knots. If you tend to make tighter knots, you should reduce this number. The embroidery floss typically has a diameter around 1mm. That means a bit more than 1cm of knotting string goes into one knot, while only 2mm for the base string. This can also be useful when you need to determine whether a scrap is long enough for an alpha pattern. After finding out how much string is used in one knot, we move on to calculate how many knots there are in one bracelet. As we can see, in a normal pattern, each knot is represented by a small diamond shape, with a side length of 2d, as we calculated just now. The height of the diamond is square root 2 times h. When we add one more row to the bracelet, we increase the total length by half a diamond height, which is square root 2 divided by 2 times h. So, for a bracelet with m rows, the length would be this. If we want to make a bracelet of 15 cm long with embroidery floss of 0.9 mm thick, we'll need 118 rows of knots. Now we know the total number of knots in a bracelet, we still need to find out how many times the string acts as a knotting string and how many times it acts as a base string because being a knotting string consumes the string way faster than being a base string. I'm going to do this by counting the number of knots in a pattern. So to distinguish the strings of the same color, I'm going to give them labels as A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, etc. from left to right. For string A1, it's been the base string for the whole time. So it makes 0 knots as the knotting string and 7 knots as the base string. String A2 is completely the opposite. It has never been a bass string, and it makes 14 knots as the knotting string. For A3, it's 12 times as knotting string, and 2 times as the bass string. Please pay attention to the direction of these two knots circled here. So we keep doing this until we fill up the table. This pattern has only 14 rows. We need to repeat this pattern until we reach the desired length, which is 118 rows as we calculated before. The total occurrences as knotting string and base string for each string can be scaled up to the whole bracelet like this. 
And finally, using this equation, we can estimate the string length that goes into the knots. The results are very different. As you can see, A1 and A4 are the shortest. We only need around 0.1 meter for each, but we'll need more than 1.2 meters for string A2. If we simply cut 1 meter of all strings, we are going to run into trouble towards the end. To verify the calculation, I did an experiment myself as well. I cut strings according to the table, but add an extra 30 cm for the ties, and made exactly 118 rows following the avocado pattern. This is the bracelet I got. The bracelet turned out to be 15 cm, as predicted, and I have about 15 cm extra string left on both ends. To summarize, here I'm writing down the one equation takeaway message. The length of a string can be estimated as the length of the bracelet divided by the number of rows in the pattern, and multiplied by bracket 8.1 n naught plus 1.4 n base bracket close. n naught and n base are the number of knots this string made in the pattern, as the knotting or base string. This is the length of the string that goes into the knots. You also need to add another 30 to 50 cm for the ties, and just to be on the safe side. That is all about this model. Before I go, I'd like to talk about a special type of patterns. Patterns with uniform string consumption. That is, all strings in the pattern are used at the same rate. The best example for this type of pattern is a candy stripe, but there are actually so much more. Patterns like chevron, zigzag, fishtail, dovetail, all fall into this category. We can make some interesting conclusions regarding these patterns. Since each string is consumed evenly, a string must act as a knotting string and a base string in the same number of knots. For these patterns, we don't have to count the knots as before. We can simply plug this expression into the string length equation which is derived, and we see that the string length is only dependent on the length of the bracelet L bracelet and the number of strings n. Now, let's say we want to make a 15 cm long candy strap bracelet with 6 strings. This equation tells me that I'll need 60 cm of each string just for knotting, and we allow for 30 to 50 cm for ties. This is in the ballpark as the advice on these two forums. We can also see that L string increases with an increasing n. This verifies the conclusion that a bigger pattern will need longer strings. Finally, in this equation, there is no string diameter d. That means using a thicker string will not change the string length consumed to reach a certain bracelet length, but you'll need to do fewer rows of knots. That's all for the talk today. You can find the equation for estimating string length in the video description below. Thank you for watching.